All right, welcome back everyone. Uh, it is late August and uh, today we're gonna try and fix a lot of bee problems that we've uh, encountered throughout the season. So we're gonna fix some messy comb. We're going to uh, try and clean up some propolis on the frames and, and fix our bee spacing uh, between the frames. We're gonna treat for mites because we're totally infested with mites. Um, and we are going to reverse the brood boxes on the Italian hive. We, uh, we made a reverse last time, a week ago, um, and we shouldn't have done that. Uh, there should have been more honey in the brood boxes, at the top of the brood boxes, than brood. Uh, we interpreted that as a problem, but really that's just the bees preparing for winter. So we're going to uh, put the brood boxes back where they originally were last week, so the honey's on top and the empty frames are down below. On the uh, Russian hive that was uh, very empty, we're going to put uh, sugar syrup on that and uh, we're going to hopefully uh, trigger them into thinking that uh, there's a nectar flow and then hopefully laying some eggs and, uh, and get some brood back in that box. So uh, here we go. So one of the things that we learned this past uh, Monday when the Pawtuckaway Beekeepers Association came to do a hive inspection with us is uh, that we weren't doing a lot, uh, we were doing a lot of things perhaps uh, incorrectly. So one of the things that they taught us here was that once we get this inner cover cracked, we're going to hold it open and uh, we're going to get some smoke under that inner cover. We're just going to leave it for a second here and let it do its thing. Uh, and rather than just blow immediately out of the hive, that smoke will get down into the frames and get the bees a little bit hungrier uh, and give them a chance to eat some of that honey. One of the, one of the tips they gave us was once you get this uh, cracked open, the bees are going to naturally be attracted to the light. So you don't want to open it and then close it all the way because you'll squish some bees. So keep it cracked uh, just a little bit. So one of the problems that we have is the spacing between our frames. It's, uh, it's too wide because we didn't do a great job at spacing this properly. Um, and that allows the bees to make some messy comb which is going to be problematic in the winter when it becomes time to cluster because there'll be a little bit too much space uh, and, and that will cause uh, it'll just be too much space between bees they won't be able to cluster tightly and that'll reduce the, uh, the success of them wintering Another problem that we had was there was a can in my smoker that we were putting the fuel into. I guess that's pretty normal. Uh, and if you've seen the past videos, I have just a hell of a time keeping the smoker going. Uh, and it put us out a very small amount of smoke. By removing that can, uh, we drastically improved um, how much smoke comes out of that can. Scraping up this propolis will let us get uh, these in nice and tight. Another problem that we had was a lot of oversized comb uh, right in here that's preventing us from getting in nice and tight. It's creating a bulge on this frame, uh, which is causing an indent on the next frame. So I'm going to try and do move the bees out of the bulge area and cut some of this bulge back. Easier said than done, I guess. 
bees really don't want to get out of the way. So I'm not sure this is the right frame. So it's just taking off the propolis without taking the frames out. Just running the uh, hive tool down the inside of each frame. This is the frame in question. And I'm not sure I'm going to be able to keep the inner cover up here to work on it. So I'm going to put the inner cover over here where you can't quite see it. I'll show you the frame. So it's honey and it's sticking out very far. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to just cut that and put the honey on top of the inner cover. Oh boy, come on. Let's go bees. So hopefully we won't kill too many bees here. Leaving all that right here at the top of the inner cover. It's making a mess. Big mess. Sorry, bees. But I've been told that they will uh, clean this up and reorganize it appropriately, and it will not be a big deal. So that's what it's looking like afterwards. Opened up that honey, just removed the thickness. I'm going to put this right back in. Some of that honey is going to drip down, probably. Just going to pull this nice and tight now. Get that proper bee spacing back. Just squeezing the frames together on the sides, making sure it's nice and uh, nice and tight. And all of these frames are now very tightly touching. Try and do the same thing down here. It's amazing how great the smoker works now. So I'm not doing a full inspection today. Uh, we did an inspection this past uh, Monday when we had the Patuckaway Beekeepers uh, Association by, and they really helped us out, showed us a lot of things that we weren't doing the best way possible, uh, and that's why we're in here today, uh, just cleaning things up, trying to get uh, back to proper bee spacing, treating for mites, we are completely infested with mites, we learned how to do a proper sugar roll, uh, which I'm not going to do today because we just did it. Uh, but next time we do a sugar roll, I can show you the proper way to do that. And these bees are also, this Russian hive, they're, they're, they're starving. Um, there's plenty of wild food out there, but for whatever reason, they're not getting it. Uh, and we're going to feed these bees some sugar syrup as well. So every week now, um, we will cut back any of the comb. We'll do one frame at a time, and we'll cut back the bulging comb on each on one frame at a time until we have reasonably uh, proper comb on each frame. You know, I hadn't been doing a good job at keeping the propolis levels down, so there's really way too big of a gap between each of these frames. The last thing we have to do over here is get our Mite Away Quick Strips on. I'm doing the seven day approach, two strips. The wind is blowing away from me in this direction, so I'm going to want to stand with the Quick Strips going away from me. I've never done this before, but reading 
the security warnings on this package, it makes it sound like a real big deal. Don't get it in contact with your skin. Don't breathe on it, or don't get it in your lungs, rather. Uh, it's pretty intimidating. So, you're gonna, I'm putting on these latex gloves. Two uh, pieces between each brood box for a period of uh, seven days. Everyone downside, let's go. And we're gonna stagger them on either side. Here's our safety tab here. And the box does not, there it goes, all right. The box does not open easily. All right. Loaded, loaded with poison, uh, poison warnings. That's that's a great feeling. Cut open, carefully remove, and separate the strips, and then apply strips on top of frames. There's two in each one of these packages here. This this is sort of intimidating. And of course, that did not open easily. Great, excellent. Stumpies. So, um, there's not a lot of honey on here anyway, but the quick strips are supposedly safe for honey supers. Uh, we're not going to be harvesting any honey from these guys this year, so I'm not really worried about it. But uh, overall, I don't know, I didn't, uh, I didn't think it was a wonderful experience. I just kind of got a little bit of a scent of it. And, uh, potent. Um, you always forget something, don't you? I forgot the slats that I wanted to put on top for the sugar syrup, so I'll have to come back for the sugar syrup. You know what, we're not going to actually inspect the honey supers on this one. Well, now let's take a look. See how these guys are doing. Starting to build out the top honey super. Bottom one looks a little better. A little bit of burr comb. Looks like they're getting a little sloppy in here. Again, I did not do good spacing. Um, that's my mistake. But this looks pretty well filled out. Let's take a look from the bottom here. Oh, very heavy. Very heavy. This is this looks like a full honey. Heavy. So really pays to make sure that you're doing everything properly right from the get-go. Having to go back and clean it up is uh, you know, less than desirable. So really make sure that you've got your spacing correct and you know, having the bees work overtime for your mistakes. Let's take a quick peek at a frame while we're in here. Brood, larva, a little bit of honey. 
clean cup. Since this is an Italian, we just get rid of that. Ibis. So this is the box that will become the bottom. And this is the one that will become the top. Down here should be most of our tons of pollen, lots of brood, a little bit of honey. Brood pollen. So wind changed directions on me here. And uh, glad I noticed that. So when it comes time to put those uh, strips on, I really don't want to be breathing any bit of it in. So brood and pollen mostly. Maybe I'm not going to rotate these boxes. Again, very sparsely populated. No honey though. I think they're moving the honey up. Where, the, where there was honey last week, it's gone now. So I'm going to leave these boxes right where they are because they're doing a good job at moving things around. I want to scrape more of this propolis off, but they're very um, busy down here. Good one, bees. That was a good one. Oh, that was a really good one, bees. Right on, the, right on the tip of the finger. Good job, bees. Defend that, defend that hive. We're almost done. It's the first time I've put on gloves this year, I think. You know, they get you right on the finger like that. That's good. That's smart. Good, good defending bees. Well played. You know, I, th I thought it would be the Russians that would always give me the trouble. But lately, they seem very docile. And uh, the Italians are the ones that always sting me. They're also a much larger hive. Way more bees. And uh, I probably kill way more of them. Sorry, bees. See what's going on with smoke here. Okay, it's going back in the direction I want. So let's get those quick strips on before I... Uh, before I grow regret doing them. Should have definitely brought scissors out for the quick strips. The knife is not ideal. So I'm not sure how to get the bees out of my honey super, but I want to. Once they get you, you get all jumpy the rest of the day. So we fixed the bee spacing. We cut off some honeycomb that was extending way past the frame. We put quick strips on both of the infested hives. I'm gonna triple read that documentation because uh, I'm a little scared now. I did get a whiff, uh, a strong whiff of that uh, quick strip smell. Um, I quickly moved my head away and, and you know got some air, but I'm, I'm really uncertain if I should have been wearing a respirator with that. So uh, I'm gonna go back and triple read those instructions. Um, but I, I honestly feel fine. But we got the quick strips in there. I'm I'm very nervous about the uh, the amount of warnings on these quick strips. Um, but we're mite infested, very mite infested. We needed to do something, and this is the only treatment that I have available right now. Uh, and these bees need to get uh, get in shape for winter if they're going to survive. So I feel good about putting the strips on. Um, just a little uneasy about the warning labels on the strips. So I'm going to do a little bit more research on that. But this is year one, and this is a good time to make mistakes if we're going to make mistakes. Uh, I need to get a large hive body to conceal the sugar syrup for the Russians. And I need to figure out how to get the bees out of my honey super so I can bring the honey super 
down to the house and then find someone who has an extractor and get the honey out of there. Uh, that's it. I'll put the sugar syrup on uh, off video. And thank you very much for watching. And hopefully we'll get back into a regular routine of uh, doing bees every week. Thank you.